The drive to boost U.S. tourism industry and increase accommodation on the island has hit a minor snag. Months after signing an agreement to transfer of Matawai Resort to the New, New Zealand Newer Trust, it appears that the lease for the existing property is yet to be finalised. At the last court High Court hearing, sitting the judge refused to sign off the lease on the Matawai property until payment was made to the New Development Bank for an outstanding amount of $1.3 million. Despite this setback, according to one of the trust directors, progress has been made and work is on schedule. I'm thrilled because um, the Matawai is coming along really well. We've done a big refurbishment program. Uh, a lot of the decking's been replaced. Uh, the roof's been resecured. I think they've put a bit, thousands of nails into the roof of the Matawai. They've done the guttering. They've pulled the kitchen out, put a new kitchen in. So the refurbishment part of the Matawai is all done. Just about to start. Literally, they're doing the surveying and the clearing now for the new units going into the um, left-hand side, the 20 unit new units. So the Matawai, ahead of schedule, very pleased. Visitor centre, stunning, nearly done, ahead of schedule, ahead of budget, thrilled. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful destination, I have to say. Uh, going to be, I think people are going to be surprised how important that, that visitor centre is going to be for the island. We're just about to um, go to the market, go to the island and say to people, if you've got a bit of land, if you've got a house, uh, or you're an existing operator in the private sector that wants to see um, some expansion, then come and have a talk to us because we have a fund we're setting up to help people either build, redo um, up or expand um, for a visit accommodation. So that's about to go to the market. So that will be wonderful as well. So in terms of this fund that uh, you've referred to, what do people have to actually do in order to access these funds? All, all that we're looking for is the first thing up is an expression of interest. We're looking for if you've got a location where you think we can build some accommodation because you have some stunning locations without a house on it. Or you've got a house that's just disused, maybe just feeling a bit sad for itself, no one's living in it, that you think is in a good location that some tourists might like to live in for a week or two uh, and go on to, into our tourist product. Um, or you've got sort of three or four motel units and you've got space to build another four, two or three units. What you do is you put your hand up and you come along and see us and we will have a fund that helps you build um, or um, expand or do up uh, your, your accommodation. And, and we then support you with that fund to help you fill the place up uh, to make sure tourists are, are staying in it. We use um, the tourist, tourist office uh, to literally build a website, develop a website, and we literally go out to the market saying, we've got some really cool places for you to stay in and, uh, and book, book, book and come and stay and spend. Another property that the Trust was hoping to spruce up is the Anaiki Motel that has been dormant for a few years. The property is now owned by the New Development Bank as the owner has handed over rights to the bank to put it up for tender. There have been discussions and negotiations between the two parties, but the Trust is frustrated with the decision to put the property on the market of the plans had been put in motion. I suppose my only frustration is we still haven't got the um, Aniki Motels off the ground yet. Uh, that's been a bit slower than I thought it should have been considering we started work in it in October. It appears that the stalemate of the negotiations was to do with the value of the property and offers put forward we still remain unclear. What's frustrating is that still nothing's happened and I suppose I go back to October when we started working on designs for the motel, we did the plans in October, uh, we worked with the bank, um, we then went ahead um, and the bank fully understood that, uh, to sign off on the plans for a really smart looking motel unit. Then we bought the equipment to do it up, that came up on a boat, the boat landed so we've got the plans and we've got the equipment so we thought right let's start but obviously we had to finish doing the lease arrangements with the bank. I suppose our surprise is the bank then decided that they'll go to the market and say, oh, does someone want to buy it? And we've said, and, and, and my comment is, pity you didn't do that in October. Pity you waited all the way till sort of March, April when we had all the stuff here and had the plans here. It's pity you didn't make that decision in October that you wanted to go to the market. No problem going to the market. If the market wants to pay more than we want to pay, Go for it. 
But shivers, you could have done it in October. Because what we've done now is we've missed a whole season. Because we wanted it built, because it will take Arrow six to eight weeks to build it. So we've got the plans, we've got all the stuff here. Six to eight weeks, it will be built. But the bank's now gone out to the market saying, does anyone want to pay anything for it? Uh, and, and as I said, they have that right. It's just a real pity they didn't do that way back then. Because it is important we have that accommodation. Um, I don't mind who, who owns it, because we want to support whoever owns it to, to make it a successful um, motel, because the island does need the motel. It's just been a bit frustrating, really. So what's actually going to happen with all the materials and plans that you've brought in uh, for this particular project? Um, and that's a fair question. I suppose I asked, uh, I said to the bank recently, if you actually want us to pay more than we originally offered, tell us how much. Give us a number. Well, we haven't had a number from them because they want to see what the market will pay, what other people might pay, rather than give us a number and us say, OK, or too high maybe, and they actually want to go to the market to see if someone else will pay more than maybe what they would have said to us as a number. Um, so I am sad that they haven't come back and given us a number uh, because I can't do anything. It's not my building. I have to wait for them to make their decisions. Um, we have to use the stuff we've bought. We have got showers. We've got all the fixtures and fittings. We've got the roof. We've got the walls. We've got it all in containers. So we will either... Uh, use it on other projects, or if the bank does find someone who wants to buy it really quickly, we'll sell it to them, because we want it done. It's fantastic for Nui. We want it done. We think it's important for Nui. So we'd sell it to them, and we'd probably give them a good price to buy it off us, because we've got it here. We've done the plans. Why, don't, why would they pay to get plans done? We've done them, so we'll sell them the plans, as long as it happens. The hope is that the development of this property will go ahead or this may be seen as a lost opportunity. We have uh, made it clear to both the general manager and the chairman of the board, give us a number, tell us what you want us to write a cheque for. We made it clear. We had to do, a, there's, there's two numbers. There's a lease, and we had the lease the same as the Matavai lease. We thought it was fair that we actually had the same leaf, lease for both properties. They wanted more than that. That's fair. Tell us how much more you wanted. They haven't ever done that. And uh, I've asked them for a number of times now, give me a number. I, I need you to tell me a number. See, with the, with the Matavai, we had a valuation. So we had a starting point. I don't think the banks had a valuation done for uh, the Aniki Motel. So we want them to tell us, if they want us to write a cheque on top of the lease, well, that's fine. Give us a number. Tell us what the number you want is. And we'll tell you whether we think it's fair, too high, and we'll negotiate. Not a problem. They haven't done that. So what would you say, or the trust say, is the value of the Anaiki Motel? Not a lot. <laughs> it has potential. But if you look at it for what it is, it's a wrecked, run-down, old place that's been there for three or four years. It's rotting. People are wrecking it. People are taking the walls off. People have gone and recently and smashed all the windows. It is a wreck. What's a wreck worth? Now, when it's built, it's obviously worth quite a bit because you've spent, we think it's cost about 300000 to to well, 250000 to, to do it up, which is why we've suggested to the bank you make the money on the, um, on the turnover. So your rent's tied to the turnover, so you make money over time. It's not worth a lot. From the bank's point of view, they're looking at the location and the view. What is the view worth? Oh, at the end of the day, I mean, when you buy any sort of house or any city, city, there are only three things you worry about. Location, location, location. But the thing that the bank, I suppose, has to get its head around is anyone who does it has to spend a heck of a lot of money on it to make it worthwhile, to make it, you know, stable and to make it gorgeous. That's the cost. That's the return. So you have to look at the return you're going to get. Um, at the end of the day... It's either going to sit there looking like it is and go downhill very fast, or we can very quickly convert it into something that benefits Nui. So all we want to do is build it for Nui's sake. We don't want to own it. It's not our stone. I, I just hope the bank has the same philosophy. 
It's good to to hear of the the desire for developments in the tourism industry uh, to help Niue. Uh, but I guess from the bank, maybe they're also looking on getting returns for uh, for the loan repayments that are still owed to the bank. Would the trust be willing to make repayments on the default loan as well as the lease? No, because there's probably many people out there that have default loans or have gone bankrupt, and if we did it for one, then they'd all probably come and say, hey, you're doing it for that one, why don't you do it for my one? No, no, that's just stupid. At the end of the day, businesses go bankrupt. That business went bankrupt. There are, New Zealand is littered with bankrupt businesses, and people have lost millions of dollars, millions of dollars. That's the financial world out there. The bank made an investment with a mortgage, and it has failed. The mortgage was not repaid. You've got to say, right, we've got to write it down and walk away and say, that was a loss. Now, how can we convert this back into something that's a lot more positive and makes a difference to the island and make some money through maybe a turnover-related lease? I think that's the way you've got to look at it. BCN News contacted New Development Bank today regarding the Anaiki development, and they responded that it will be premature for the board and the bank to comment at this point in time. We'll bring you more on this story in our future news bulletin. New Air Telecom's problems with cellular services in outside villages have been resolved yesterday and more development continues to upgrade the ageing system around the island. According to the Director of Telecoms, Mr Tutuli Haka, the ongoing developments of their services has disrupted some services, but the technicians continue to work towards rectifying the problems. The developments will also see a mobile phone service commercially used by the end of the month, but that needs more verification before release. With newest ambition to join the rest of the digital world, it is foreseen these developments will address the, some of the setback faced by the island with its global communication capabilities. Niwe Wood has brought many debates on why Niwe should not fall into the pit of Hollywood hype. That, according to overseas New Wayne contributors, to New Zealand High Commissioner Mark Blumsky's suggestion that New Wayne should look at utilising New Wayne's numerous natural resources for film projects from overseas filmmakers. High Commissioner His Excellency Mark Blumsky told Scoop New Wayne Island is a stunning destination and thinks it has huge potential as a tropical paradise for film location. The filming potential is enormous, says His Excellency. The High Commissioner went as far as suggesting a keen base of locals should or who would love to be extras and with no actors' equity union and that filming here is sure to be a breeze, Mr Jackson. With comments from New Orleans overseas, locals are responding that New Orleans should explore its potential and for overseas New Orleans, not to be territorial as they do not reside in Niue and any development to increase the island's economic development should be looked at. Unfortunately, we were not able to contact His Excellency Mark Blumsky for a comment on the article whether it will eventuate to anything more than great publicity for the island. Meditation and yoga is probably the key to some of our personal problems, says an expert of the subject, if we want it. According to Krishna, the word yoga could mean different interpretation by some, but its meaning is simple, and he said he is aware of pessimism, but there are benefits to the process of finding inner peace and calm. Thinking positive instead of going into negative the, that is called meditation. Mm. It's very simple, very basic. Even I can give you some thoughts like this, that I, the soul, remembering Supreme Soul. So this is basically, that's it. And then by practicing that, then you totally, totally, totally remove this body and then you come to a state where you can feel you are so light that's where you can have a good, fine and pure meditation. That is actually pure thoughts. As more people turn to different stress relief approaches, Krishna said it is beneficial and other islands has adopted the methods increasing personal development and lifestyle. The experience of meditation helps you even somebody is giving you negative. 
So you come back to a position, just keep it in yourself and just give him a pure thoughts. Saying, mm, stop that, this is what my thought is. Instead of going that way, no, 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 it should be this way. But still, if you are going that way, you can make it a very positive line. So it is just basically thinking. Just like I can give you one idea of uh, doing this, is the mind. The mind always fluctuates. So to draw that line straight, you have to focus yourself, who am I? So that who am I means I the soul. Because if the soul doesn't enter this body, you can't talk. Right, you can't listen. See, with these two eyes, you can see only one. So this is the power of our soul. The soul resides right on the center of the forehead. And then whenever you focus that, and it, it makes you think that, yeah, it is true. And then slowly, slowly you will feel it is light. Once you're feeling light, and then even if you go to work, or you are walking or working or doing anything, even cooking, you will feel light. As soon as you start feeling that um, feeling that um, lightness, then you will know what exactly meditation is. If there is interest, says Krishna, a trip back to the island will be considered. The HMNZS Otago is making a courtesy stopover as part of the South Pacific deployment today. The protector class offshore patrol vessel is in service of the Royal New Zealand Navy and this is part of a tour to the Pacific Islands that includes Samoa, Tokelau, Niue and the Cook Islands. The Navy vessel is on a one-day visit to the island. It has 53 crew on board and half of that number expected to come ashore. Whilst on the island, the Lieutenant Commander Simon York paid a courtesy visit to the Acting Premier. New Zealand High Commissioner, Acting Secretary of Government, as well as the Minister for DAF. The crew also had time to check out some of some sites and play a friendly game of touch rugby that has been organised to be held at New High School at 4.30pm today to be followed by a function hosted by the New Zealand High Commissioner at his residence. The HMNZS Otago will depart the island at 10am tomorrow morning. And to end our news bulletin, last weekend the New Athletics Association held a gold coin appeal that was deemed a major success. Volunteers went from door to door asking for donations and collected a whooping $1,831 with more donations yet to come. NAA President Tani Rose of Ghost Manawa Louis says that the generosity of the community was greatly appreciated and this will contribute greatly towards athletics developments. New Athletics Association will also be sending a team to the Oceania Regional Championship in Samoa next week and will be held from the 21st to the 23rd of June. That's our news bulletin for tonight. Don't forget also you are all invited to the Hakupu Show Day this Saturday up in um, Hakupu Tuafineoni. Everyone's welcome. That's our news bulletin. Good evening.